Yeah, back on the Sports Mag Zone, the Jamaica Hockey Federation on Sunday released a 10-member squad to the inaugural Hockey Fies World Cup to be held in Muscat Oman from the 28th to the 31st of January. Jamaica secured their spot after finishing third in the qualifiers held in Kingston last June behind fellow Caribbean country Trinidad and Tobago and the tournament winners USA. The squad is led by captain and goalkeeper Johnny Burton as well as two vice captains Richard Harris and Christopher Reed. A second goalkeeper achieved Johnston as well as Tyrone Vernon, George McGlashan and Shamar Gordon all have international Hockey Fives experience while Kemar Mitchell, Tasif Graham and Daniel Powell are the newcomers to the squad. They did not play in the qualifiers last year. The team's participation, however, is in limbo as the Jamaica Hockey Federation is in a race against time to fully fund the trip. The Federation is currently facing a shortfall of approximately 5 million Jamaican dollars or close to 32,000 US dollars to get the team ready to depart on the 22nd of January. Joining us in studio to discuss the naming of the squad and the current financial shortfall is President Fabian Stewart and we also have on Zoom head coach Devon Henlon. Um, well, Devon is actually on the phone. Um, Devon, welcome to the Sports Bank Zone. Um, how are you doing? I am good. Um, thanks for having us. All right, and let me start with the president, Fabian Stewart. Um, on this day in sport, Fabian, first of all, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sports Bank Zone. Welcome to our beautiful space. <laughs> it is beautiful. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Where are we on this day in sports? Well, we are getting closer to our goal. Um, I would say that we're probably uh, 60 to 65% uh, of the way. Uh, we have had some commitment related to the shortfall. We're still probably about, I would say, 3 million out. But we have had some commitment to the initial $5 million shortfall. So we're getting a little closer. Yeah. Are you... One, disappointed, two, surprised that having qualified for this inaugural Hockey Fies World Cup from last summer, that you find yourselves in this financial position? Uh, it's, it's very, that's a very interesting question. Having been a part of the sport for a long time, having had this, the challenges over and over again, I think uh, we are trying to change a paradigm in, in Jamaica and certainly in the Caribbean in terms of sports and the number of sports, the diversity in terms of sports. Uh, so you always recognize that a lot of the funding will go to the bigger players and then at the end of the day, what is left of the pie, you would share. So we were a little bit taken aback because uh, we've been working on this process for about six years. Uh, and we had had great support, I would say, from the, the minister, the ministry, GOA, and even corporate moving forward. But for some strange reason, I don't know what occurred after. Uh, I, I suppose when people saw the original budget to go to woman, uh, there was a little sort of hesitation in terms of uh, everyone coming on board to push us forward. Yeah, do you think as an association you've marketed this achievement in the best possible way? Because this is a significant achievement qualifying for a World Cup. It, it absolutely is. I mean, we've been playing the sport from 1902. Yeah. Mm. And for, uh, for a second there, when you said we, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were included. <laughs> Jamaica has been playing <laughs> field hockey from 1902. And I'm brought here by the, the, the uh, British, uh, I think it's the Indian Regiment, uh, B British West Indies Regiment. But um, we've never gone to a World Cup, an FIH event. So this is actually the first of its kind. Yeah. Um, let me get Nicole involved in the conversation. Um, Devon, Devon involved in the conversation. Um, Devon, the, uh, uh, the squad that has been named, talk to us about your squad and how pleased you are with the 10 that you will be taking to Oman, fingers crossed. Well, the players are very excited, for one. Uh, I think the squad is a very rounded squad. It is filled with experience and um, talent. So, Hockey 5 is a very new version of the sport. 
And um, a lot of the players, they do have some amount of experience from the 11 side. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we retained seven players that had previously played in the qualifiers, and there are three new players um, who didn't participate. However, not to say those players are not talented or have the experience of playing field hockey, as they have also played for the national team before in other versions. So, um, Kemara Mitchell, who is one of the newer players, is a very experienced and talented player. Plays a lot of his hockey in the US, and he was just, wasn't available for us at the previous tournament, but now he's. And to see if and Daniel Powell again wasn't available to us. So it's good to have them in the squad, and I'm sure the other players welcome their participation. Um, we have George Magashen, who has played over 50 caps for Jamaica. So he will bring his wealth of knowledge and experience um, at various tournaments to the team as well. Yeah, I have to ask you this one because I remember the qualifiers last year and uh, Nicoy Stevenson, I think his name is, he was one of the leading players for Jamaica on the goal scoring front, but I don't see him in this lineup. That took me a little bit by surprise. Is he injured? Yeah, I would say it would take a lot of players by a lot of persons by surprise. Nikai is one of our top goal scorers. Um, very talented young man. But Nikai has had some challenges this term, this time out, uh, with his work commitment. And due to his work commitments, he wasn't fully available for training. Um and that's one of the challenges that we face with um, a sport like field hockey that is not a really professional sport played in Jamaica. All of the athletes, they are either full time work uh, or a full-time job or if they're in school they're full-time student athletes so with that it's sometimes difficult to do a balance when you're kind of like volunteering your, your skills or your talent to represent jamaica but um if nikai nikai will be missed he will be missed but i'm pretty sure the other players who have came into the squad in his replacement they are just as talented and they're eager to represent and give their best for Jamaica. Yeah, given what you just said, because I also know that you pointed out Kemar plays a lot of his hockey um, overseas um, and the, the issues locally with, with getting individuals to train consistently, if, if I am to understand what you said correctly, how difficult was it um, to prepare this squad for the World Cup? Well, the men's team has been benefiting from the fact that a lot of the athletes currently now are student athletes, or majority of them just finished university and are not fully engaged in a job per se. So with that, it allowed them a, a bit more time um, to train, and they could commit to the five days of training per week more than the um, other athletes who have left university over a longer period and are now fully engaged in full-time jobs. Yeah. Um, Kemar has been back and forth between the U.S. and um, Jamaica as he also engages in coaching and developing younger athletes there as well. So it's it kind of like tying coaching hockey and playing hockey um, together for him that works out so he gets more time to train and play. Right, and coach, with all of that on the table, you know, all these different constraints happening, um, you're drawn in the Group B alongside Egypt, India and Switzerland. Which of these teams do you think, based on, of course, your research and all the work that you've been doing, will be your toughest opponent? Well, coming right off the bat, India will be. Um, India is a very strong playing nation. I think they're currently ranked number three in the world. Um, I looked at the squad that they have released, and they have persons there who have won Olympic gold medals, won hockey World Cups before. And so they're coming with a strong, experienced team, and I think they will be the most challenging team for us. Coach, has what has been happening off the training ground, you know, just trying to get the funds ready and getting all the logistics out of the way, has that affected your training in any way? In somewhat. In some cases, yes. Um, the limited resources didn't afford us to get any practice games prior to playing at the World Cup. Um, the last time the team, played, the team played competitively would have been in July when we last participated at the Hockey Fives qualifiers and then the CAC games. Um, so no competitive hockey for the boys since then, but we have been doing our best to make it competitive. And that was one of the reasons why we had such a big training squad 
so we could pick teams among ourselves and keep monthly practice games. Um, that was one of the things that we had implemented to try to keep the competitive edge as much as possible. Right, and Mr. President, we spoke about a month ago mm -hmm. and you were set on ensuring that the team goes. I know you've been getting some of the funds. Is it that y'all are going, whether or not? But where will the funds be coming from? Let's put it this way. Missing this tournament is not an option for us. You said that to me and now and I'm And we are going. Yeah. Mm. And, when, and going. when you say it's not an option, there are possible sanctions if you don't turn up in a mine, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah. There are sanctions, but uh, the, the significance of not going to a tournament like this is just the effect uh, that it would have on our overall development program. We've been at this, as I said, when we came in from, um, I think it was 2016, developing uh, some of Coach Inland's youngsters actually played at the uh, Hockey Fives qualifiers. So we have been working on this to get us to this international stage yeah. in order to facilitate those players playing at a higher level mm -hmm. and at the same time enhance our development program. Mm -hmm. We have had some commitment from the FIH president related to that development program. Uh, so there is a lot for field hockey riding on our participation. Yeah, and just to be clear on the question that Mariah was asking both mm -hmm. Coach Devon and yourself about the psyche of the players, even in the past week or so, because there would have been uncertainty about their travel because of the lack of funds. I spoke with the Trinidad and Tobago coach today, um, Darren Coey, mm -hmm. and he he's preparing his team. <laughs> I asked them if their tickets were ready and all of that. He said he, they, they aren't dealing with that, so um, that, that's for the association. As far as he was concerned, the team is preparing and there's no thought about that. So I'm just saying from a Jamaica standpoint, mm -hmm. is this uncertainty a negative in the psyche of the players as they get ready? I think that question would be better posed to Coach Henlon, but for, for me yes. and the response that I'm getting from Coach Henlon and also technical director Dr. Holt, yes. uh, the sessions they've worked with the players and the, the, the fact that I've tried to be open and honest, yes. the players recognize that there are difficulties, but I, I do think that they know that, they're that going. I, they, I usually, you know, we, we pull through. We find and a way. I, we always find a way and they will be going. Yeah. And as such, they will be putting their best foot yeah. forward. Yeah, we're putting it out in the atmosphere. The <laughs> Good Jamaica energy. Hockey Fives team will be at the World Cup in Oman. They have already qualified for it. They now just need the money to ensure they get there. And the help will come starting as soon as Mr. Stewart leaves <laughs> this set. Let's take a break. Interactive to come <laughs> on today's edition of the Sportsman Zone. <laughs>